What's up guys? I'm out here in the shed shop today. Newly functional shed shop, I should say. We're making some doors today. Uh, Dad hit me up, said, hey man, I need some new shed doors. I've made gates before, plenty of gates um, for fences, obviously. And a couple other, like some cabinet doors here and there. But I've never made a solid door before. So I've got an idea, kind of got some things. I looked around on the internet, found some, some references of things that I liked and some products. My dad has a lot of sun on his property where the shed is. So I was gonna go one route and I just realized that if I would try and do a glue up and all this type of stuff, and it just probably wouldn't last very well, even with a proper finish on it, um, protective stain, clear coat, all that type of stuff. So decided to go with this manufactured siding as the majority of the uh, internal panels and then it'll just be made from two by four. And yeah, hopefully it works out. Uh, we're gonna see, I'm sure it's gonna work. It's gonna work. Okay, first round of sanding is done. We got all the pieces here. All the pieces of the framework anyway. Uh, they're all cut to length, sanded, planed, uh, ready for assembly. So how I'm gonna go about doing that is I've got a Craig jig. Gonna put some pocket holes in these to connect them. And then after I've done the pocket hole, I will put a six inch lag or no, it's eight, I want eight, eight inch lags through each of the connection points to just really make sure that that stays together. I've done that a lot with gates that I do, I make, and it seems to hold up really nicely. So we've got some Simpson strong tie, eight inch uh, countersink lags. All right, here's those lags too. Just had to go find them, I left them in the truck. They are the SDWS timber screws. It's not technically a lag, but Eight inch. Put it in there. Stamp. Perfect every single time. South, everybody's got to have a loud truck. When you have a screw this long, it's imperative to keep it as level as possible because, especially in this thin of material, it'll work out one way or the other and blow out your side. So I just kind of like ease my way into it as I go, doing little bits at a time. Double checking, making sure there's no perf or uh, like bubbling hap happening where just before, if you can catch it before it blows out, you can pull it back out, reset your hole a little bit, and then hopefully not have to um, start over. <laughs> totally flush, inset, and there you go, boom. All right, I got the two door frames done here. Took me a couple tries because this, this wood kept splitting because it's just regular old two by four white pine. Wondering if that was a bad choice at this point, but got them made. We'll see how they do. It's kind of hard to get it all in shot. My shop's kind of small. These are kind of big, but 
There you go. All right. Last we had talked, I had gotten the doors framed out. I ended up working an entire day on it on it because I was having to figure out some some things with the routing and getting a jig made for that and you know figuring out the techniques of how I wanted to do the inlay for the panelings. And as you can see, I got one done. So I kind of had to figure out the process of how I wanted to do it since I've never done this before uh, for a solid door. Um, but I'm gonna show you how I do how I did that on the second door, which is here. Um, I've got a, I'm gonna take out the center bar. It definitely made it pretty hard to get the, the inlays done with it all as one piece. And I ended up having to redo the center part like three times just because the router wanted to, to shift one way or the other and ended up with some sloppy routes. Hopefully today it's, it does, goes a little better. Um, I'm gonna make sure I film all of it this time and then you'll see how I did it. All right, here's the jig I came up with. Just pretty simple, just a piece of wood, two pieces of wood. You know, got my depth here, got my little hole for the bit to come through and then just mounted it to the bracket on my plunge router. Got this beefy two inch uh, straight cut, Diablo straight cut blade. All right, like I mentioned a second ago, you know, when you run this, this bit through it's circular, so once you hit the corner, you're gonna be left with this. So what I like to do is I'll take the oscillating tool and come through, cut this here, cut this there, kind of do a majority of it with the oscillating tool. And then once I kind of get it to that, then I take a chisel to it and clean it up and make sure it's as, as close to a 90 as possible. Side note, by the way, shout out to Stumpy Nubs for telling us to turn the oscillating tool this way and then grabbing the blade so you can really, I mean, I use this thing a lot in, in jobs that I've done over the years. Um, and I always, you know, you know, use it this way. Everybody thinks, oh yeah, if you flip this thing over, dude, boom. You can see it so much better. You can control it so much better. Just make sure you don't get your fingies down here, you know. Beep. Legit. Shout out to Stumpy Nubs. YouTube channel, Stumpy Nubs. And there you go. Perfect-ish 90 degree corner. Second door is all routed out, ready for the panels. And like I said before, it's gonna look like that when it's done. But I gotta go get some more plywood. I guess I only have enough to do one square, not the second one. So I gotta get more plywood and another sheet of that, which sucks. It's gonna be like just a little section off of both of those, but what are you gonna do? We're gonna do. Yeah, off to Lowe's. Yay, off to Lowe's, here we go. So I've been cutting some panels here now. I got the first of them cut. This is the, the top one here. The top one's there. They have slight variances from the routing and everything, but the most important part for me is making sure that these vertical lines on this paneling lines up so that this line here lines up with this line down here. We don't want them to look off or whatever. So I kind of had to shim out and fix the last one, but on this one, I've had a little bit of foresight to take the first panel I cut, line up the grooves to make sure they're hundred percent the same spot, mark there and there, because the width is luckily very, is consistent, but the, the lengths are just slightly different. So now that I got that set, I'll pull off, mark, mark, strike, strike, and then cut, cut, 
and it'll be on there. Making progress a lot quicker than yesterday, that's for sure. I guess I had a lot of figuring out to do. That's probably why I didn't end up filming any of it, but it's okay. It makes it look like I know what I'm doing this time, so. Alrighty, we got all the panels cut. All the siding panels and the three-quarter inch ply that goes behind it. Got all of that cut. They fit pretty nicely, considering my routes being a little off, but... So I'm going to come through, put some pocket holes in this, and then that'll screw it into the frame. And then they're pretty much done assembling at that point. They'll be ready for filler, sanding, final sanding, and then painting. I'm probably going to go over to Dad's house and test fit them first before I do all the finish finish on them, just in case I need to shave a little here, or shave a little there off the frame itself to make it fit better. Uh, I, don't, I don't see that being too much of an issue but you know I like to always have a plan B so we're gonna get the pocket holes put in this get this all attached and then we'll probably call it for today and then take them over to dad's house maybe tomorrow or something I'm planning on going over that way anyway so we'll take them over there and, and do some test fits and all that Pocket holes are done. So now we we'll come through and just take each one of these. We're going to put two inch decking screws. Boom. Boom, like that. And it's just going to zoom right in there. And then this door will be assembled. So let's get to screwing. So it's been about a week since I recorded anything on this door build. Uh, we had some family come in town, kind of put some put a stop on the project for a little bit. Um, but yeah, we're to the point now. It's at mom and dad's house at their shed. I'm in their shed now, the shed where the doors are going to be hung, and we're doing some filler. I had to trim the doors just a hair to make them fit the way they needed to, so we ran them through a table saw. Uh, kind of take a little bit of width out of one side, only about an eighth inch on each door. And now I'm going through the caulk and this Woodwise full trowel filler. So I'm primarily used for hardwood floors, but I use it on a lot of different projects. I've never used it exterior, so we're going to see how this lasts. I feel like it's going to be fine just because it's going to be painted with an exterior grade paint. So it should protect it and it shouldn't be an issue, but I'm just using this to like kind of fill in this these little imperfections here, anywhere there's like a knot where there might be pores. I'm going through and filling that in. And on the back side, all of my pocket holes that I did before will get filled. And then come through, I'll show you the one on the outside here. Poppers. Yeah, and then going through and caulking up underneath all these ridges here. Just so, the shadow might be kind of bad. There we go. Just so water doesn't get down and under there between these seams and also just so it kind of looks more finished once it's said and done so we went through and caulked all the edges with an exterior caulking so yeah, i usually like to let this stuff set up for about 24 hours before sanding so once we get all this done we'll uh, come back and sand it and paint them and hang them and there it is that's the finished product I think they turned out pretty well. Not too bad for my first solid doors anyway. Uh, there's definitely some, some imperfections there, some things that are not 100% how I would like them to be. They'll work for what they are, and I mean, for my first try, I think they, they turned out pretty well, and I'm happy with them. They're happy with them, so that's, that's all that matters. So thanks for coming along for it, and. Hope you learned something with me. I definitely learned quite a bit. I would I would change a good few things on how I did it in the future if I were to do this again. But um, that's what it's all about. So thanks. See you guys on the next one.